Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to let you know, um, closed captioning is working. If you want to turn that on, it's at the bottom of your screen. Oh, great. Okay. Yes, Zoom has adopted closed captioning. Okay. Michelle hey, Miller. Alyssa. Alyssa's here. All right. So I see the presence of a quorum. And so I'm going to call this meeting of governance, organization, and legislation to order on December 2nd. According to my watch, it is uh, actually, what time is it? 10.31. So um, at 10.31. And I'm first going to make sure that everyone can be heard and uh, can speak. So we'll go around the horn. Lynn? Yes. And Mandy? Yep. And Pat? Yep. And Andy? Yep. Thank you. And, and uh, let me see, Alyssa? Present. Thank you. And Matt, just so we can hear you good? Yes. Thank you, Matt. All right. So, and Michelle? Is just yes. Dear. In. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. So, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of governance organization legislation is being conducted via remote participation. We are being recorded. And I've just been told that closed captioning is functioning and working. So um, I believe that's everything we need to do from that perspective. Just quickly to my colleagues on GOL, as you may know, we have gotten a response from KP Law related to facial recognition. Um, they sent uh, fairly detailed comments and, uh, and also a little bit in an email memo so both of those, I believe, are in the packet. They're certainly on SharePoint, and I believe they're in the packet. Um, actually, they're not. I take that back. Um, I apologize. They're not in the packet, and they're not on SharePoint. Um, but my plan is to take that up. Um, well, we'll talk about this later, actually. But they have come. it has come in. I don't know if the sponsors have any thoughts on that at the moment, um, whether, um, but that's just uh, for general knowledge. Okay, um, I'm going to pretty much follow the agenda as we have it in front of us. So the first item of business is to continue our review of the uh, anti-racism uh, resolution and a copy of that uh, is in your packet. And we have the sponsors present. Uh, we have Alyssa here, we have Michelle, and we have Matt. And I'm going to begin by asking my colleagues if they have any comments or concerns or questions about the newly revised version of this resolution. So I'm looking for hands. Um, I see Mandy, I see Pat. Let's start with Mandy. Okay, um, I have very few, so mm -hmm. don't, don't freak out. Just one, so on page two. Yep. The, I don't know which whereas it is, it's about halfway down the in 2019 in Amherst, the median family income for white families. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like there needs to be an and before the third one. So the white families, comma, 51% of the black population was reported as being below the poverty line, comma, compared with 30% for white, comma, and white residents in Amherst were four times more likely to own a home than black residents. Because okay. I think there's three groups. So I think we need an and before white residents. And then my only other comment relates to three whereas is below that. The yeah. one that starts the Amherst Town Council acknowledges the trauma inflicted on black residents. Um, mm -hmm. The third line says, conjures painful memories to our town's past, not only for those who lived through them, but also the generations that have followed. and. In reading that, I wasn't sure what the them was right. modifying. Mm -hmm. um, so it made it a confusing sentence to me. You know, is it the memories? Is it the ideology? I just wasn't sure what you were trying to hearken back to. Um, so some clarifying on that would be helpful to me. But otherwise, those are the only things I had. Okay. Um, so insertion of an and. And a question about that particular uh, whereas clause. Any response to the whereas? I assume the and is, is no problem. Um, any comments on the whereas clause? 
I see Andy's hand is up, but I'm gonna wait for a second, Andy, and see if the sponsors have any thoughts there. Should I just go ahead? Or just go ahead, yeah, I, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't see your hand, but that's because I'm blind. So go ahead, Matt. <laughs> yeah. um, I think the intention here is for the them to modify memories, but I understand that it's not entirely clear, or it's almost like it's supposed to be modifying events, which is implied in memories. So that, I think that's where the lack of- Eggs and toast. No I think that's where the lack of clarity comes from. Um, so- a change we could make that would make it clearer? um yeah i think let's go on and okay. we'll we can take note of this yeah it's, i think it's an easy fix okay all right um andy i see your hand raised so andy yeah go to the very bottom um the last uh substance of am i muted uh, i think everyone should be careful with their muting um i like to keep it open but we do have some noise in the background i'm not sure where it's coming from so um, you are not muted, Andy. You're coming through loud and clear. Yeah. OK. So um, in the last, uh, very last clause, there's the term reparative. And um, so I decided uh, that I wanted to, after last night's meeting, um, began to think about the question of what is the definition and uh, so it's really a starts as a question for uh, the sponsors. Uh, when I looked up the word in the dictionary, the first definition is the active process of making amends for a wrong. And then the second um, in uh, subsequent ones, uh, there are the next two definitions that are given in the dictionary I was looking at talk about um, money paid compensation remuneration. And uh, I was wondering if uh, we just need to be clear amongst ourselves as to what is intended by that term and whether uh, it's the the what we want to put forward. Well, is this an issue? This is an issue of clarity. I take it, Andy, um, or because it's, I don't think it's a matter of actionability. Um, it is clarity. Okay, you just want some clarity. It's not clear if you've got a term and you have different people interpreting sure. a word in different ways, and we have, and when you look at the dictionary. It is multiple um, meanings that can be given to the term, and that then creates a question of clarity. All right. Um, so we have a question for the sponsors on the use of the term reparative in the very last, be it further resolved. Any thoughts or comments on that from the sponsors? And again, you can just speak up. I'm looking for hands. I don't see any at the moment, but if you're raising your hand and I don't see it, just speak up. You may uh, also be free to leave it as it is. I mean, there's no... Uh, yeah, I just, I mean, as a response to Andy's question, the intention in the use of the word was very simple and straightforward based on the first definition that he found in the dictionary. Okay, okay. I, I would also add, sorry, I can't really see That's myself right, or anyone, yeah, I mean, but <laughs> <I can't even. laughs> Go ahead. Um, I would also add that the word process um, to me works with the word reparative in a way that does keep it in line with that first definition that Andy mentioned. Okay. Okay. Andy, would you repeat the first definition? Okay, I'll say it again. I, I but but I also want to just mention that I'm very appreciative of the comments and uh, was tempted to leave it at that. the pr The first definition in the dictionary that I'm looking at is the act or process of making amends for a wrong, which is the way that I read it when we talked about it last time. Uh, and I'm 
comfortable with it with that definition. But I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have a misunderstanding, uh, which is what the clarity question is. Okay. But I'm I think this is, yeah, I think it's something that also could come out in the uh, council uh, discussion. If, um, but yes. Pat, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to go back to um, an earlier section on page two, the whereas that begins with 2020. Yep. Uh, it says, uh, where is it? Uh, <clears throat> we're uh, following the national outcry following the murder of George. That bothers me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it should simply say, uh, whereas in 2020, um, following the murder of George Floyd. Yes, there was a national outcry, but it, what we're getting at is that Amherst. So it's that following, following bothers me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I agree. That's a bit awkward. So you're suggesting that simply striking- it, um, it just say, one, two, uh, three, following four. the murder of George Floyd. The striking the words, following the national outcry, striking that. Yeah, ooh, son. And um, again, so that's a sponsor suggestion, but I don't know if the other sponsors have any thoughts. I just remember that the reason that happened is that someone was concerned last time that without any um, specifics, people in Amherst might wonder why we were, if, if they hadn't heard of George Floyd, why we cared in Amherst about it. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm just putting that out there as the reason why it, it ended up there. I mean, you could say follow the national outcry in response to, or you I could... thought about that too. That would be yeah. okay with me. Yeah. So that's another option here. And then I have one more very minor. I want Mandy to know, Joe to know I had her end, but I didn't have her second one. Um, in uh, also on the first now therefore, um, yeah. In accordance with the fundamental principles of the Declaration of Appen uh, Independence, which asserts that all people, it does not assert that it asserts that all men. So I think that the quote should start after people. I don't want it to say men uh, only. And I think it should it be that all people, quote, are created equal. And that's probably silly, but so I don't care if it happens or not. But I noticed it this morning. Mm -hmm. I like it, Pat, and good catch. <laughs> okay. Mandy and I are in competition in case you haven't figured it out. <laughs> all right. It's a, it's a good competition. It's a healthy competition. <clears throat> and that okay. was um, it for okay. me. That was it for me. So if okay. we, if, if it's acceptable, particularly to Matthew and Michelle, the ones that we've made, can we just look at the, um, the highlighted them and figure that out? Because then we would be ready to have the committee vote. Uh, and we that, this. that is my sense. Yes. Um, I'm I sorry, George. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I got to move my laptop and the sun is, wait, let me just close the curtain. I'm not sure if this matters, folks, but was the font change okay to keep it uh, limited to the three pages? Is is that looking? Um, I think I limited it to three pages. Yeah, is that looking, okay? Is that is that readable still and everything yes, okay sir. with that? I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Great. <laughs> okay. Great. I appreciate putting it to three pages. Thank you. Um, so the them. Um, what any thoughts on what? if anything needs to be done here. Let me read it one more time just so people can hear it. <clears throat> Whereas the Amherst Town Council acknowledges the trauma inflicted on blacks by persistent white supremacist ideology results in psychological harm affecting educational, economic health and social outcomes and conjures painful memories of our town's past, not only for those who live through them but also the generation that have followed, generations that have followed. Right. I, when I read that, I don't have a problem. Yeah, I don't. Problem. But 
uh, I'm, that's open for discussion. I see Alyssa's hand. Alyssa, please. Would it help the people who are concerned to change it to these ex those experiences or these experiences? Yeah, From these events or these experiences. It just, I guess Matthew had it exactly right when I was like, it seems to harken back to memories, but you don't really live through memories. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Right, that's correct. I also believe there needs to now be a comma. Okay, so not only for those who lived through these events or experiences, experiences, I think is good. Okay, who lived through these experiences, comma. That's the suggestion. It could be, but also for the generations that have followed. Yeah, I think four is better because. Yeah, agreed. Yes, yes, it, that, that would be parallel construction. That would make sense. Okay, Alyssa, your hand's still up, but that may be residual. But if it isn't, please go ahead. Okay, my hand is down. So I think um, we have made all the changes. I have no further changes to recommend. I think this was an excellent rewrite. I think it addressed um, everything that was raised at our last meeting. We made a number of minor changes, which the sponsors seem to be perfectly comfortable with. Um, the title was a, an issue. Uh, are people okay with that? Whoops. I'm sorry. That's all right. I do that all the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with the title. I think so a resolution affirming the town of Amherst commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity for black residents. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm willing to entertain a motion that uh, this committee will declare uh, this resolution affirming the town of Amherst commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity for black residents to be clear, consistent, and actionable. Um, Take that motion. So Andy will make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. So Mandy seconds. Um, I don't see any further discussion. So I'm gonna go immediately to a vote. I'm gonna start this time with Lynn. Yes. And Mandy. Yes. And Pat. Yes. And Andy. Yes. And the chair is a yes. So that vote is five to zero unanimous, declaring its resolution to be clear, consistent and actionable. All right. Um, Lynn, uh, this will go to the council when, do you know? Today. I'm it's sorry? It's on Today. the agenda for okay. Monday night. It's on Monday night's agenda, very good. Could okay. I ask a clarifying question? Sure, yes. please. Um, I, and this is of Michelle and Matthew, uh, and uh, we have the history document. It is not going to be attached to the resolution, but I would love it if it were in the packet uh, for counselors to read. Is that possible? Absolutely. Right. If you no, would send that to um, my to me today, I'll make sure Athena gets it. Okay. So Michelle, will you take care of that? You bet. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Michelle. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we're going, we're going to move on to. Uh, our other business, but uh, I want to thank the sponsors for their presence and for their hard work. And uh, as Lynn said, this will be on the agenda at our council meeting next Monday. Thank, thank you, you very much. Careful review. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thanks for all your work. Yeah, see y'all on Monday. Yes, indeed. So the next item is actually the patent citation, which um, is sponsored by. Um, uh, Dorothy Pam. Right. Dorothy can't join us until noon. So I'm going to hold this for a moment. I did not see any problems with it at all. I thought it was well written and I think it should be um, easy for us to get through. But I think as a courtesy to her, um, she I'm not certain she's coming. Um, but uh, I did have an email back and forth and uh, 12 noon was what worked for her. And so I'm going to wait until then. Um, and if she hasn't joined us by then, we'll come back to it. But I'm going to hold it off for just a moment. The next item I have on the agenda is to deal with the uh, FinCom vacancy. And um, what I'd like us to do 
we have reached the uh, two week. Um, we're a couple hours short of the full two weeks, but um, this was posted two weeks ago. So we are able, I believe, to um, make a decision as to um, uh, the pool sufficiency. So we can declare the pool sufficient. I'd also like us to um, uh, vote on the uh, selection guidance. I'm hoping we can just use the selection guidance from last time. Um, I have one minor uh, suggestion to change, but I'd like to do that. And I'd also like us, if, if it makes sense to you all, to make a decision about the term length. Um, but assuming we can do those three things, or at least most of them, I would then proceed to notify the candidates um, and we go on from there. So the first question is sufficiency of the pool. Um, and I think you have a document in the a folder that tells you that we had 10 um, individuals in the pool. Um, I believe eight of them were prior uh, people who had already uh, been in the pool before um, and two were new. And um, I believe in that document, I tell you the status of all of the applicants. Um, again, a number of people had not responded um, and they also didn't respond the first time. So, but we did get um, on a couple of no's and we have three yeses. We have three individuals who have said that they would like to be uh, considered for this position. So I guess the first question for you all is whether um, that number and the three candidates that at the moment um, have expressed an interest in being considered is sufficient for us to proceed. And so I'm gonna open that up to any thoughts people have. And the chair will keep his thoughts to himself for a moment. Andy, where do you think you stand on that? I, you know, we, we advertised uh, as best we can. Uh, we reached out to everybody who had expressed previous interest uh, I uh, think that it's a group that merits consideration. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, continuing. See what the rest of you think. I agree. Mm -hmm. with Andy. Yeah, Lynn. I agree with Andy. I think it's a, a sufficient pool. Um, the fact that you've made the effort to contact all of the others that would act can be considered in the pool yeah. and have some responses. I think we should go ahead and declare it sufficient and move on. I agree. Okay. Same here. Mandy, okay, good. So I would like to then um, make the motion that we declare <clears throat> the pool for uh, FinCom to be a uh, sufficient. Second. Second. Okay, Lynn, Lynn will second that. And so again, just quickly, let's we'll start this time with Mandy. Yes. And Pat. Yes. And Andy. Yes. And Lynn. Yes. And the chair is a yes. So that's five zero. We're declaring the pool to be sufficient. Um, so we have three active candidates. Um, and so the next question I have is whether we can also declare, the, just vote on the selection guides. I believe we're required by the process to, to vote on the guidance. Um, since we have the chair of finance present, um, if there's any need for changes, we could make them, but there should be, um, so this is the process document that, that lists all the various steps, but there should also be in the folder, a document, yeah. right, that um, spells out what we used last time. And I have one very small proposed change, but we need to look at it as a whole and people need to decide if they're satisfied with it. Um, I have a hard copy in front of me, but... Um, There's one on the screen now. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I had one question. Sure. Which is this, the big middle paragraph. In addition, the chair shall solicit from the chair of the finance committee input as to whether there are any preferred knowledge or expertise. Um, I know we have the chair of the finance committee on this committee. I don't know whether you've solicited that input and Andy didn't add any or whether it hasn't been solicited, but I'd be hesitant to vote on the guidance until we have the input from Andy as chair of finance mm -hmm. into this document. Right. And I, was and I don't remember whether we had that input last time. 
or what it was? I think it was pretty informal. Um, and okay. so that may not be satisfactory to you, but, um, uh, and I was going to simply turn to the chair of finance since he's a member of this committee and ask him if he is willing or comfortable to speak on this now. If he's not, we can delay, but um, is there any, I was just gonna ask him directly actually, right here in real time, um, is there any um, preferred knowledge or expertise that the committee requires to better assist in this work? Uh, this is a really peculiar circumstance that we're in, and I'm going to actually just recognize it, that we also have a quorum of the Finance Committee that is sitting here right now, too. And uh, so that, uh, because under other circumstances, what I might say is uh, um, I'm comfortable, but um, I'd like to put it on the agenda for next week's uh, finance committee meeting to see if I have other suggestions from members of the finance committee and then bring it back for yeah. our next meeting. But I'm in the, I, I feel like I'm in this weird space right now. Well, there is some time concern given the budget uh, process. And, um, but that's just one concern. It's not necessarily the only one. There's also a process concern. Um, uh, I don't, weighing those is, is difficult. I think, um, I guess a question that would be fair to ask you and um, others can weigh in is how important is the, the timeliness of this? Um, we have moved, I think, fairly quickly to declare the pool sufficient, I think in large part because of desire to, uh, to fill this position quickly, given the budget process. Um, if we delay further, um, we would be looking at, um, well, our next meeting is December 16. And, um, what we're required to do is have at least one week uh, before the actual um, uh, interviews and vote that the, the materials be posted publicly. So um, we can meet that schedule if we proceed today. If we don't proceed today and have to wait, and that's fine, but if we do, then I think we're talking January before we would actually get around to sending this to the council. Um, we do have a set of selection criteria that worked, I thought, perfectly well and are very clear. And I, I don't see any reason to change them. Um, we do have the chair present um, along with two other members of his committee. Um, and if there was any particular concern, he could simply say, I wanna take this to my committee and that would be the end of it. And we would just have to wait and that's fine by me. But there, I think is a sense that the sooner we can get someone on this body, given the budget process, the better. So um, that's the only, my, my thought is if we do send it to, if we wait and have finance weigh in formally, which is fine, we would probably not be able to act on this. The council would not be able to act on this until January. Right. I feel like the, um, I, I agree with George um, that the criteria worked last time um, and that we should move forward with it. So we're not delaying. And then if, if, the finance committee uh, members have input that can go for the next round because that's not that's going to be coming up fairly soon anyway. It, it can also be in the questions that we ask to explore whether candidates have a certain experience. But I'm I'm a, I'm inclined to go ahead, and the reason I'm inclined to go ahead is because as I look at the two existing uh, non-voting residents of the finance committee. We have somebody who is really, really steeped in public finance. And we have another person who has now been on the finance committee for a year and a half and has really come into their own as a person who has taken a lot of time to understand the town's finances. So I'm not feeling as vulnerable with regard to people who understand the town finances um, and that would be the major outstanding criteria in my mind. So I, I'm, 
I just want, you know, I ask a question because it's in our own process for seeking out the chair. I'm comfortable with Andy saying as chair, I'm good with the selection guidance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know from my chairmanship of CRC that various chairs of other committees that have similar requirements on processes for appoint, you know, for recommending appointments, um, the various chairs of those committees don't always actually ask the rest of the committee. Um, that doesn't mean it's a good or a bad process, but it's not out of the ordinary for the it to be just the chair. So I don't necessarily feel like by adopting a process today, um, as long as Andy as chair has said, this is, looks good for me for now, you know, um, that we're going outside of a norm um, for the council as a whole. Um, and I do get concerned that if we do take the time um, that we can't do interviews till January and it can't be acted on the council until mid-January, um, whereas now if we can get those interviews in in December 16th, the council can approve uh, and appoint a new member at this very first January meeting. And two right. weeks doesn't always sound like a lot, but given where we are in the budget process, that could be a lot. Um, so I'm actually our second meeting in January is not until the 25th of January. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. okay with going forward though in response to what you just said, Wendy. Yeah, we're in the middle of the budget process, but the budget process has this funny thing where we go through the stage we're, going, we're in right now where we uh, develop budget guidelines and it's too late for that, that's gonna be done. And then the budget process kind of um, gets into a slower space and because it's really Paul who's working on a budget that proposed to us. Yeah. Um, so it's not like I think that there'd be a tremendous loss, um, but I sort of flip it around and say that I don't think there'd be a tremendous gain by postponing it either. And it's good for the candidates who've now responded that they show an interest that we um, move with some speed. Right, and I think again, this is in response to a resignation. So this is an unusual circumstance. I think in the normal course of things, when a term is up, we start this all much earlier and there's a, but here we're trying to fill the vacancy. Um, so there is a certain uh, sense of haste. Um, so I'm, what I'm hearing, Andy, is that you're comfortable with these guidelines as uh, written and um, do not feel it necessary or absolutely necessary to consult your committee on it and you're willing to go ahead. Um, I, and please correct me if I'm mistaken, but um, I also have just a small question about the document in the very last paragraph under our favorite topic, term limits. Um, the, the, the word second term, maybe I'm just not understanding it, but it says generally if a person is serving a first term, they're given preference for a second. Um, conversely, if a person is completing a second term, shouldn't that be a third term? Because actually these are two year appointments and the, the usual length is six years. And so I'm just wondering, am I, maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but if a person is completing a third term and there are other qualified applicants, preference would be given um, all things considered to a newcomer. We would not normally give preference, not saying we couldn't do it, but we normally wouldn't give preference to a newcomer if someone is applying for a second term, correct? It would be the third term, or um, right, completing a third term. I, I think this is legacy from when this document said normally limited right. to two terms of three years in length. Exactly, um, exactly. So that shouldn't this be a third term? So I think the first sentence should be if a person is serving a first or second term, they're given a preference for okay. another term. And uh, then like, conversely, if a person is completing a third term. Right. And there are other qualified applicants, yeah. yes. Well, I'm going to suggest we make that change. And um, so what would we, we would read, as Manny just said, if a person is serving a first or second, so insert or second term, and I can make these, I'm making these changes. Yeah, the, I don't have the word doctor. All right, I can, I can. Um, they are given preference for, for a- Another um, term. For a third. 
I think you can just say for another term. Okay, for another term, okay. So it would read, if a person is serving a first or second term, they are given preference for another term. Conversely, if a person is completing a third term, and then the rest would go on as stated. So that's what I'm suggesting as a change. Any thoughts on that? I think that's good change. Okay, so we're going to amend this document with that new wording and I will make the changes in my copy and um, then have it inserted into the uh, record. Um, and we, when we vote on that, can we make sure we amend the actual whatever we describe the policy as too, since that wording came directly out of our process, whatever that document's called, process for- In the process document, um, something needs, I'm sorry, something needs to be amended there, yeah. Well, this, this term limit section, I assume, was directly copied from the process document, so it okay. would make sense to modify the process document at the same time. Right, will do. If you want, I can bring the process document up. But That's okay, Lynn. I, I, I hear Mandy's point. I will also uh, review the process document and make any changes necessary because um, this is really housekeeping, I think, as long as we'll vote in a moment on this change when we approve, when we vote on the uh, selection guidance. But, um, excuse me. Is it playing hail to the chief? Uh. No, it's not. Ah, Dorothy, you're here. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get to you in a second. It sounds like you're, um, that's fine, but we're, we're working our way through something. It'll take us just a few moments and then that's we'll fine. turn, if you don't mind, to you nope. right after that. Yeah. Um, so we have a amended um, uh, version here of selection guidance and we need to vote on selection to, to approve the uh, guidance, selection guidance as amended. And so that's the motion. Um, I'll to move approve, it. Yeah, so Mandy's uh, going to move that we approve the selection guidance document um, as amended on this date. Is there a second? Yes, second. And, uh, so Lynn has seconded. We're gonna go right to a vote. This time I'm gonna start with Andy. Yes. And Pat? Yes. And Mandy? Yes. And Lynn? Yes. And the chair is a yes. So again, five zero, unanimous. Um, we're approving the selection guidance. We have also declared the pool to be sufficient. And um, all right, I will make those changes both to the uh, guidance document and also to the um, process document. Do we want to talk briefly about the term? Mandy, Joe, you have your hand up. Okay, Mandy, please. I, I was actually not going to mention the term. I was going to say, should we decide when the interviews are and then let George determine the dates for the due dates for the statements of interest and all of that? Right. I was going to yeah, suggest we do the interviews at our next meeting, okay. which would, that, but this is just a suggestion. And that um, I notify candidates later today that the three candidates um, that they have one week, uh, they have until Tuesday of next week to submit an SOI and uh, that they would be interviewed on Wednesday um, sometime between 1030 and 1230. We'll set that in a moment. Um, now, obviously, if there's a problem with that timing, that could create a, a challenge for us. Um, but for the moment, my suggestion was to um, interview on the 16th and then have the vote on the 16th. Um, and the only possible problem I can imagine is that someone simply can't make that Tuesday time. I'm hoping that won't be the case. If it is, we may have to do some, um, well, I don't know what we'll do. I mean, one option is to just make a special time and hopefully everybody can be there. Um, oh, it's Wednesday, it December 16th. Yeah, yeah, not Tuesday. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Wednesday the 16th is the meeting, but I'm going to make the SOIs due on Tuesday of, of this coming week. Um, so they have to be, the SOIs have to be posted one week in advance of the interviews. 
So um, I would tell them you've got a, a week to get the SOIs in and they have to be up um, by basically Wednesday morning of next week for a week. And then we, then we could proceed with interviews. That's what I'm suggesting. Now, if we don't do it that way, then we're either going to have to have a meeting in, in late December um, or we'll have to wait till January. That timeline works for me. Works for me. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you do run into a candidate that for some reason cannot the, make the 1030, cannot, then I, I think we do need to reconsider just because of the fast turnaround. But if it can work for them, I think we should go ahead. Okay, so I will reach out to them later today and, and, and confirm the interview uh, and the SOI. Question of just, I'm going to suggest one of the candidates has already submitted an SOI. One of the candidates has already been interviewed by this committee. Um, so that raises the question of A, may I give the candidate the option of, they may submit another SOI, but they're perfectly free to simply ha have us use the one they just gave us. That's Jane Scheffler, isn't it? That is correct. So Scheffler has submitted an SOI. Um, and I think Mandy, in comment to me, has suggested that, um, you know, you can say to her, she's perfectly free to just, you know, leave that one in or she could write a new one if she wants, but it has to be in. If she's going to do that, it has to be in by next Tuesday. I, I feel she should be given the opportunity okay, to, that seems reasonable. to change. The other question is whether we should interview her again. Uh, can we, are we satisfied? Do we, you know, is that... You know, if you just interviewed somebody in the last, you know, a short period, um, should we, uh, I mean, what's the thought on interviewing? I'd like to interview her again because we are looking at other candidates as well. Okay. All right. I agree. I okay. think she needs to give the opportunity. We do have to remember that it's not required for any of these candidates to attend the interview under our selection guidance. Um, right. I right. believe we made the interviews optional for any candidate, um, but but certainly we should definitely offer all the candidates the equal opportunity to do the interview. Good, I agree. That, makes, that makes sense to me as well. Um, does that also give us an out if a candidate cannot make the interview time? If someone says, look, I just can't make that time? No, No, it doesn't. one of the things I was just gonna suggest if I can continue, and Please. I'm going anyway, so um, I think we should have an alternative um, evening possibly on the 16th, Wednesday the 16th, just as a backup to go for the first one, but it could be two candidates who for whatever reason, because 1030 to 1230 is uh, during a normal work day and yeah, many people are working. Right, right. So that is a good suggestion, Pat. I'll see what the rest of you think that we could tentatively pencil in a, uh, like uh, we wouldn't need more than a half an hour these interviews are basically 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes max. So if we could agree on that Wednesday, the 16th, um, I, people have their calendars otherwise, but um, um, I do have an event, but it's not, I can get out of it. So um, seven o'clock, is that reasonable? Or I mean, what that do people think? For me. That works for me. Okay, seven o'clock. Lynn? Ho hopefully we it's won't need to do it. For me. No, I have, I do have a question, but it is reasonable for me. And the question is, um, if we do, that is the point of final interview. Is it the intention of the committee to continue meeting as we did last time to make a decision? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. really talking about a longer period of time. That is correct, Andy. Yes, right. you're right. That's going to be more than half an hour if we have it, to do that. It works for me. And that would have to be, um, it has to be posted within 48 hours. So I, I have more than enough time to do that, but it would have to be posted. There's no question. So um, if one or more of the candidates says I cannot make the daytime interview, uh, then we would offer them the evening interview. If they can't make that, <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but at that point, I'm really wondering whether we're really under obligation to, uh, to move heaven and earth, um, but so tentatively good. Wednesday interview, 10.30 to 12.30, offer an alternative at seven. If we do have to do that, we will also go a little bit later because we will do the vote then. I didn't know the council had the power to move heaven and earth. Uh, no, but this committee does. does. Uh, I'm the no, this committee can move hell only. 
<laughs> Thank you very much, Pat. Um, so uh, can we talk about term and then I want to go to Dorothy. Um, uh, so I think we've settled everything that I need to settle except the length of the appointment. And I'd like us to uh, talk about that and make a decision if we can. Um, I'm going to make a suggestion, but you're perfectly free to, to, to reject it. Um, I'm, I'm not particularly excited about a six month appointment, but that is an option. So that's just me speaking personally, but I, I don't think we can offer a two year term straight up because that, um, right? In other words, it, it has to be, if we offer a two year term, it kind of creates, well, it, it ends in the middle of a, of a, of a uh, right a budget season. So that's no good. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna suggest a year and a half. In other words, complete this term and then it would, um, end in 20, what would it be, June uh, 30, 2022. So, so it'd be a year and a half, year and a half. That would coincide with Bernie's one, right, term, Bernie. but not right. the other one. Right, right. That would okay. be my, I double check that, but that would be, um, so I guess the options are two, as I understand it. One is just six months and then uh, renew, then they're up for renewal. Um, and the other is a year and a half, and then they're up for renewal. Um, Do you feel like there's anything in the charge that prevents us from doing this? Uh, I think that, I think it just can't be more than two years, right? I mean, it just, right, we cannot appoint somebody for a term longer than, um, than the two year limit, but we're certainly free, I think, to appoint somebody mm -hmm to a one year, um, or are we? I mean, that's, <laughs> I just assume that, but that's, that may not be right. Any thoughts on that, Mandy, in terms of process? I'm I mean, trying to why... find a finance charge. Right, yeah. I'll see if I can find mine too. Um, I've got mine here. I mean, I think it reads like most charges. It doesn't talk about fractions of terms, but it doesn't not talk about it either. Um, so finance charge, I've got it here too. So I've got that it's um, two years for non-voting members um, and then three non-voting members. It, it doesn't say anything, right. no, it, it doesn't. two years. I and mean, when you have somebody resign and you decide to fill that position, um, are you simply restricted to filling the existing term? Is that just the rule for this in, sort of thing? Or can in you- In most instances you are. I mean, for example, yeah. if we had a school committee person, right. like we did, we right. could only appoint for the remainder of that term. Right, right. That's my only hesitation. But sure. that's because there's an election right. that's built into the charter that you have to, uh, you don't, you don't want to have the citizens have to vote separately. Right. This is uh, something that's totally a council matter, and I don't think that it's the same. I mean, I think we could propose that to the council, and the council gets to decide whether or not it's a valid term. Do they? Do we propose that before or after? Well, I think it would, the motion would be to appoint so and so to a term that ends X, and then it would be up to some clever counselor to to, to notice that it's it's not a two year right, and then raise an objection. But if, if it's no not clever two years, counselor, it's not six months. <laughs> right. So you know. If nobody says anything, then fine. If somebody raises the objection, then I guess we can have a debate about it. I can't imagine why anyone would care, um, but maybe somebody does. The other one is just to do six months. I, I like a year and a half with a report that explains why we're proposing a year and a half instead of six months. So yeah. why are we? I mean, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, I recommended it, but what, why? <laughs> I, I think six months might be too short and a year and a half yeah. maybe more sense and it still doesn't put if 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 um sharon's you know old term was the only one up in you know this june in six seven months 
then maybe a year and a half would be problematic because then we'd have all three up at the same time in a year and a half, but we don't. So given that, it it still keeps that sort of staggering goal of experience right. while also recognizing that the issue about some length of time for commitment purposes. And right. we also didn't violate the two year term issue. Right, right, right. so this-, this And it keeps it in June when we want these, June to July when we want no, these- we definitely want it to end in June. That's no question, June 30. So uh, what I'm hearing is that people at the moment are people are comfortable with um, the year and a half. So this would end June 30, 2022. And in the report, the chair would simply point out that we're doing this in part um, because we're trying to stagger positions and also because we felt that six months um, really was not, given the, the nature of the commitment, uh, someone asking somebody to serve on the finance committee is a, a very serious uh, commitment that we're in a sense doing it to reflect the nature of that commitment. Um, okay, so it sounds like people are okay with June 30, 2022. Um, I assume I can tell, uh, well, yes. I mean, I guess I can tell the, um, the applicants that um, we're going to propose. I mean, we don't decide, but we're gonna to propose to the council a term that lasts, that lasts until June 30, 2022. Do we wanna vote that now or do we wanna vote it when we get the term? I think we can vote that when we actually come to okay. the, uh, I just wanted to get a sense from you all what you thought. Um, mm -hmm. Um, I think we can just vote when we do the final motion recommendation, we'll, we'll put the term in as a year and a half. And, um, and I'll mention that in the report. Um, one last very quick thing, and then we we'll go to Dorothy. Um, I wanted to send an email message to Sharon Povinelli, thanking her for her service on the finance committee. And I wanted, initially I was gonna send it myself and I thought, well, I could send it on behalf of the GOL committee, since we're the ones who do the, the, the vetting and all the rest of it. Um, so I just want to get an okay from you all that if I send her, it's be a very brief message, but just thanking her for her service and, and, and expressing our uh, appreciation, I would sign it with all five of our names. Is that okay? Um, I think it's something that, that we should try to do going forward, at least with our appointments. So we always try to reach out to people in, in some way and say, thank you. And I think for council appointments, like the ones we're doing, um, that can easily come from GOL because that's we're the one who's doing this. Okay. Andy, gonna... Andy may decide he wants to bring that same idea to the finance committee. Well, exactly. Yeah, actually, uh, Chris, Lynn and I both said, uh, sent emails separately. Okay. Exactly. I'm sure people did. So I just want to make sure that if I did do this, I could do it myself, which I'm perfectly comfortable doing as chair, but I was going to add your names. And if that's okay, I will do that. If you'd rather, I can just do it as chair. Um, no, please do. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, Dorothy, thank you for your patience. Um, we have before us a our first citation, um, which I think is actually, I think is great. I think I like the thought that we um, occasionally recognize or acknowledge people in our community who do extraordinary things. And the council says just, you know, you know, uh, thank you, or we're just recognizing it. So we have a citation in front of us. Um, for Dorothy Patton, uh, the sponsor is uh, Joyce. 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 Joyce Patton. Sorry. Joyce V. Patton. Right. Joyce V. Patton. Maryland. Thank you, you. J.V. Maryland. 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 Okay. All right. wow. Maryland on the title. All right. right. Totally. Oh, my totally. Name. Let's let's. I wrote that down in my notes a minute ago. Yeah. It's it's Maryland V. Patton. Maryland V. Patton. But Thanks but so. that that synod that group of names by the way, all the same year. <laughs> Like there's no little Marylands now, there's no little Joyce's and there's no little Dorothy's now because that's an era, that's a name era, right? Right, right. I got it. <laughs> yeah, well, one of, the, one of the cute jokes, which is not in here, but which, which is that uh, when I watched the um, uh, biographic um, uh, living history video was they used to call her the general at various times uh, <laughs> because she would be putting on these big shows and big dance productions. All right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this came to us be from um, uh, the man who, who sponsored it, but it's partly because she has been 
even since her retirement, uh, a focus of alumni from the program and that they have gotten together. Uh, they've kept up ties, uh, which, which is very useful professionally, but they've also raised money for dancers in the process. So it's, it's, a, it's a, not just for her years of, uh, it's not written in here, but of her work at the university, but it's also for the continuing role. And so her big 85th birthday gala is in fact also a fundraiser for, for dancers. Okay. Well, I cast my very keen eye over this document and I think Dorothy did an excellent job going through and, and, and putting mm -hmm. it together. I did not see anything, but that doesn't uh, mean much. Um, any of you have any comments, concerns, questions about this document, changes you'd like to make? Um, let me Mandy, see Joe, and Andy have their hand Thank up. You. So let's start with Andy. Yeah, I actually, uh, it's just a couple places and I'll point them out. Um, and uh, we, instead of, uh, and I'll give the, the, go to the fifth whereas clause, whereas in 1970, um, she founded every a place else except two, we use her name. So do we want to say, whereas in 1970, Ms. Patton founded the university dancers, and then in the last whereas clause, uh, UMass dancers having, mm -hmm. a, a, um, it says her, again, uh, Ms. Patton. Uh, so that's the only question I had is whether we want to use those generic terms, she and her, or we, whether we want to place your name in everywhere as clause. Okay, fair um, point, Andy. Uh, we have Marilyn V. Patton. We have Marilyn Patton. Right. And Ms. Patton. So perhaps we want to go through and just uh, be consistent. Right. Could I, could I ask a question here? Sure. Uh, as you know, this was built upon uh, a very good uh, armature that Mandy Jo wrote, uh, and she will recognize that much of it that she wrote is unchanged. Um, you have strong feelings on these things. Um, I, my, my feeling is I don't like Ms, but I'm sure there's like rules and, and traditions on this. What are the name, because this is a good point Andy brought up. What are the name traditions? Do you keep repeating the name or do you use variations? The, the citations I've seen from the Massachusetts legislature keep repeating the name. Okay. I think I'd repeat the name and that probably means adding the V in anywhere we do it to, okay. um, you know, because they seem to use the V, you know, not everyone uses their middle initial. She right. seems mm -hmm. to. Seems to, yes. yes. Um, so. And, yep. When you go on the internet, you will find there are other Marilyn V patents even. Um, so I think the V, the middle initial is important because there are other people with, certainly there are other Marilyn patents and there wasn't that one other Marilyn V patent. Um. You're thorough, Dorothy. <laughs> well, so uh, then if we do that, then um, again, this is Mandy doing the editing, I believe. Uh, no, Lynn's doing it. Lynn, There's one you, more whereas where the her has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So let's. Okay. So it's, it's just good to learn the, 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 formal kind of traditions of this kind of thing. Yes. Um, it. I think that's so. it. No. Uh, right here, it's a, to put it, that would be too redundant. Right, absolutely. I think, I think that's a good thing. So when, when you're using uh, right after, ah, and joins Marilyn and saying, so I think in that one, it's fine, those three, because it's all the same sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep, I agree. So if I were to make a grammar rule, I would say use the whole name, except when it's ridiculously re redundant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds good. Um, now, how about the very last now, therefore? That's what we were just refer referencing. Right. Yeah. And we decided that this would, to say her name again, would be really redundant. And here it's really getting to- Join her, right? Like, yeah. 
Right, just joins her in saying? Right. Okay, thank you. All right. So I have Mandy, a few more. Yeah, go ahead, Mandy, you have, go ahead. In the first whereas, I, I wanted to add the word because right after whereas, otherwise it seems to be a weird fragment. Here? First whereas. First whereas, the very first whereas. Mm -hmm. Because the town of Amherst recognizes Ah, we take, we this, take opportunity. this opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Or you could put an and between the humanity and we, but I think the because works better. I think um, you I agree. Yes, because is excellent. So whereas the because the town time. in that whereas should probably be a capital T. It's the third line at the end. Yeah, um, so I have taken to do that. Yeah. Community, country, and world. Um, in the fourth, whereas I, this this is my ignorance of UMass buildings. Does nope stand for something? <laughs> <laughs> no it idea. does. Because it just seems really weird in there. It does. I think physical education is the PE. Um, I, I had wondered about keeping that in there too. I think we could just take it out. But that, okay. that is the name of the building, but I think it's esoteric. Yes, I think it could be stricken. I agree. Okay. Two whereas is later. Yep. The one that begins Marilyn Patton's true legacy. Um, after administrators, directors put an and before the word leaders. Mm hmm. Right. Good. Good. And then. I didn't like the comma among others, so I put an and before Boston University and recommend deleting the among others plus the comma after BU. I mean, because the including seems to imply. Right, right. That that's right. not only those. Right, right. And yeah, that sounds real fine. Oh, I had one more comma. The whereas that begins in 1970. Yep. After university's walls, I think there should be a comma. Mm -hmm. Under university's walls, comma, performing, comma, performing yeah. annually. Throughout the state of Massachusetts. As yes, well as I think that's a good one. Tehran, Iran, and Patras, Greece. Okay. That's all I had. Okay. All right, I don't see any other hands. Um, um, I just wanna, I wanna, um, is, is Pat, I don't see your picture, is Pat still here? Yes. Yes, yeah. she is. Okay. Um, in one of the articles, it made a big point that she'd studied under Eric Hawkins. And of course I did know that name. So I had included that because a lot of times artists include the names of their teachers. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Rick, the man who had presented this to us, uh, said, well, she also studied with a lot of other people. So it, I just thought I'd t tell you that because I, I, you probably know the tradition of putting the teachers in where it's sometimes really important. That's why it's not there. Not a problem. Okay. Any other comments, suggestions, changes, emendations to this document? I'm not seeing any. So I'm going to uh, make the motion that this citation in honor of Marilyn V. Patton um, be declared clear, consistent, and actionable. So moved. All right, so um, Pat has made the motion. A second, please. Second. Andy seconds. Any further discussion? I don't see any, so I'm gonna go immediately to a vote. And I'm gonna start uh, this time with Pat. Yes. And Lynn? Yes. And Mandy? Yes. And Andy? Yes. And the chair is a yes. So this citation is declared clear, consistent, actionable, unanimously five to zero. And it's going to the council on this uh, week's agenda on the consent agenda. Okay, all right. Um, can I ask one question? I, I think I answered asked this before, but I don't remember the answer. When we give one of these things, is there a paper copy? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. It, it goes on town letterhead. Uh, there's a paper. Uh, I sign it electronically these days, actually. And then um, 
we make sure a paper copy can be sent and printed in color and everything else. Great, thank okay. you. And usually, and then, like the sponsor gets the co uh, copy as well. So, yeah, Dorothy, yeah. you'll get a copy. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Right. Athena is very thorough about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's great. Um, so, Lynn, you're going to send this uh, as well as the uh, racism, um, anti racism resolution yes. as amendment to Athena. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, uh, Dorothy, thank you. Um, we're thank going you. to proceed on to uh, our next item on the agenda. And okay. uh, I, will, I will say farewell. All right. Um, and um, get back onto my office hours. Okay, right. thank you. Bye bye, Dorothy. Yeah. So I put on this item number five town council, town council policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways. My understanding is it's a very small change. It was in the memo that Paul sent to us. And so it's in the packet. And um, my understanding is we just need to act on this um, quickly. There's something else coming later related to this, but it's not ready. And I believe it's going to go to TSO. Um, so I felt that we should just vote on it and then um, I believe the council will act on it at the next council meeting, I believe. It's my understanding. So uh, if that's mistaken, we can we can hold it off. But um, it's a very small change. It's the underlined. Um, it's the sections that are underlined. And I believe it's just in. Where does it show up? Twice. Yeah, it shows up in twice. Number four. In four. Um, and Right there. All right. I don't have any um, thoughts on this whatsoever. It seems to be just a uh, technical change that has to be made. Anyone have thoughts on this or are they ready to deal with this today? I'd like to get this out um, and send it to the council in case the council wishes to act on it. Um, so that's why it's here. Mandy Jo has her hand up. Yeah, Mandy, go ahead, please. Yeah, so I have a couple questions. One was, I know TSO talked about this and probably made a recommendation. George, you're on TSO, so I'm hoping you can tell us whether they made any, whether they recommended any changes to what's presented to us um, so that we can deal with that if they did. Um, and then I just wanted to say, um, I'm not sure it would surprise this committee, I drafted this. Um, and when I did, I tried to do what Andy asked, which was incorporate sort of that generic state of emergency language so that um you know even if we'd have to modify this if temporary zoning bylaw goes by the wayside to just get rid of it but otherwise it's it's any state of emergency that this could apply to um and then i wanted to note one thing that the document we're looking at on the computer doesn't note is there's actually a deleted portion in the little i section for a one um, you know, the language that's being added, no, no, page down, right mm -hmm. there, the, the language that's being added after the end of the pertinent state of emergency or the termination date is actually replacing a phrase, quote, the, the phrase past the effective date. Um, so, you know, we had originally passed this with um, Paul's authority not to extend 180 days past the date the effective date of the zoning bylaw. And so we're deleting the phrase past the effective date and essentially moving it to the termination date of the zoning bylaw along with this state of emergency thing, which will allow us to not have to modify this again if we as a council extends the time period for the um, effectiveness of zoning bylaw article 14. Okay, now to answer Mandy's question, TSO has not made any um, changes or recommendations on this. Um, so it's thoughts about the changes and from the committee. I'm prepared to move forward. Okay. Yeah, I am too. I am, okay. Shall I make a motion? Please. I move to recommend the town council um, revise 
section four of the policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways as presented by the town manager in his updated November 18, 2020 memo. Okay, you might want to try to have, we can have the, uh, the note taker repeat that back. It's a bit of a mouthful. Sorry um, for the mouthful, Emily. <laughs> she may want That's you to, okay. <laughs> she may want you to repeat that. Again. You expect me to remember it? <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm not sure, but hopefully somebody remembered it. Um, maybe between the two of you, we can come up with an agreed motion statement uh, because we are actually recommending this, that the council approve this language, right? Yes, because that's part of our charge. Right. So, okay. Um, Emily, do you want to try and read that back? Um, and then the two, of, with Mandy listening, she can make any changes necessary. So if you could start reading that back. Yeah, so what I have is um, moves to recommend the town council approve the revised section four of the policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways as presented by the town manager updated in the 20, I think it was, what was it? November 18th, 18, 2020, 18, 2020 memo. memo. That sounds good to me. Second. Okay. All right. And is there a second? Yes. So Lynn seconds. No further discussion. I'm going to move immediately to vote. This time I'm going to begin with the chair. The chair votes yes. Um, Lynn? Yes. Mandy? Yes. Pat? Yes. Andy? Yes. Okay. So that vote is 5 0. Um, recommending the council adopt this language, this change. Okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is the um, our continued discussion of the process timeline for um, town manager evaluation and performance goals. And Lynn has given us a revised document. This is draft number four. And um, we wanna go through it and see if we have any changes, further um, comments, etc. So if we can get that up, as soon as I find it. I know, I know. I want to find the... Um... Gives us a break for a minute here. Okay. Hold on. I'll be with you in a moment. That's all right. Yeah. And catch our breath. It's, it's four, right? Draft four is the is the title. Now it actually says draft three on the document, so I'm hoping that's just the typo. That's correct. But that's the title correct. is draft four, timeline. Okay. Just make somebody confirm with me that this is the one you have. Looks like it to me. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Um, so what I was trying to do was get things um, arranged properly. What I still don't feel I've completely achieved is the shading. Um, and then I also want to just raise one other question um, that was raised to me by somebody on the outside, and that is, should the evaluation process include a time when we actually discuss what constitutes a measure, mm. some of the measures for each of these goals. And if we do that, it seems to me that we would need to ask GOL to meet with Paul sometime, you know, early on in, you know, January, February to have that discussion. Okay. We also have 
a very big block of time in here where it could be done, but we're already past those dates. So do you want me to start and, and go through by theme or how would you like to look at this? I would think, Lynn, in terms of what areas where you still have, I mean, unless we hear from our colleagues, areas that you still have concerns um, or questions of your own. Um, you've already raised the issue of measures. And I think we're all sort of pondering this. Um, are there other places that you have concerns of your own or you would just like feedback directly? I um, I, let, I put a question here, you can see yeah. it on the screen, and that yeah. is, should the review of the progress on the town manager's goals be in January? Note that the state of the town address is normally been in December. But, you know, for instance, Paul and I are both working on each of our state of the town addresses right now. Right. It is not going to be at particularly geared toward the goals. It's going to be geared more towards what has this year been like, you know, some of the a lot of which really gets at COVID. So my question is really whether these two items should be moved to January, remembering that January every other year is when you seat a new council. Right. So, I mean, if they're moved there every other year to begin with, which mm -hmm. our notes at the bottom say, in yep. some sense, it almost makes sense to just mm -hmm. put them there every year. <laughs> Got that one. I don't know what other people think, but yeah, it makes it more consistent. Yeah. And then I guess I'll take the opportunity to respond to Lynn's question. If, if the council desires to set measurables instead of just here are your goals, um, but also, and here's what we're going to measure you on, um, then it's probably better done earlier rather than later um, in that, you know, I'd set giving Paul the notice of here's how we're going to measure your progress on um, or your, your meeting of, you know, random policy goal A, telling him that in January isn't as helpful as telling him that in July. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, I was I was thinking more about this year, which we still haven't done, and but should we in, you know, future years say in July, or it's August, have a discussion of, you know. Why wouldn't this be part of the process of creating the goals themselves? Um, why would it be a separate? Mm -hmm. Um, why wouldn't it be the case that as the committee working with the council establishes goals for the coming year, part of that discussion would be, you know, what would constitute measurables um, and either incorporate them into the, the goals document or create another document, I don't know, but it seems a little odd to create the, a set of goals and then later come back and say, well, how are we gonna measure these? It seems like it'd be something you'd be doing at the same time um, insofar as they can be measured. And so um, why wouldn't this be part of the, the, the goal setting process itself and either be expressed in the, the goal setting document? Right, I, George, it's interesting you say that because it was never part of the goal setting document in the past, right. but when we had the process a year ago, not this year, but the year before that, there was a lot of discussion about how could this be measured. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't do that this time. Right, right. I like George's suggestion of including it into the drafting of each year's goals. Right. Should it be part of the goal statement or an attached document? I think you'd have to figure it out. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it, it could also create, yeah. Um, I feel like it, it could be easily be separate, um, but it doesn't seem like that's the most important thing to figure out right this second. Right. So I guess the answer that we're coming to is that it would be part of the goal setting process. And in that process, um, it would be determined whether they would be incorporated into the goal document or whether it'd be a separate document. Right. Or at least the discussion would take place. And right. Um, right. Um, maybe it never gets written down in black and white. I don't know. Um, but um, in some sense, it would, you'd want something in black and white because Paul's looking for, you know, what are the measurables here? What do you, you know, what's your benchmarks? But yeah, and it isn't just Paul that's looking for black and white. I think we, I think it would be helpful to right. counselors and the public right. if they were say if there were measures, right. and there still would be uh, the ability to input something that was um, outside of those particular measures. I think, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it would be helpful. Okay. All right. So then the other question I have here, and this this is just to bring it back up one more time. And should staff and the public have the advantage of seeing Paul's self-evaluation before they are asked to submit their own evaluation? That feels weird to me. Mm. I mean, I, I feel like why should uh, people be given his self-evaluation and if you're a staff member you might feel funny saying well he's saying that but th this is my experience it sets up a odd dynamic um and with the public i think there i can't it feels like there's something there too that makes me uncomfortable i can't name it right this second mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree with pat um you know, if we want the public and the staffs and the committee members is true feelings, you almost think that that self evaluation could, you know, color that. Um, and so I'd rather get it without them having necessarily seen the self evaluation. I feel like the self evaluation is geared towards us as counselors who have to do the evaluation, evaluating, not other people who might also submit their own evaluations. Right, right. I would second that as well. I don't, I don't see the, uh, the need or the advantage of having that available to people in advance. Um, okay. Yeah. That was my reaction to, I uh, just no need to say it again. Okay. So okay. Uh, then moving on to the color coding. Blue and bold indicate the process for the next fiscal year. So that's really right here. It's in the goal setting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, gold indicates the process current fiscal year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Green indicates where council has to take action. So basically that leaves a couple places where there's no color coding. For instance, town provides oral present town manager provides oral presentation regarding progress and current goals. So if we're going with green as council action, D10 probably shouldn't be green. We actually say no vote. Um, yeah. You know, and so. Maybe it should be green involves, maybe the wording isn't right. Maybe it's not council action, but council review or something. Count, color. Participation, whatever. Mm. Their council. I think you can leave it. I mean, it, it basically the council has to do something, right? We have to do, and maybe we don't have to take a formal vote, um, but basically it means that there's something we have to do. Yeah, review or action. Right, right. Council review or action. Sure. Council review or action. 
Okay. Okay. Right. And then right. I'll go back and. So I had one question that uh, was related to the May lines. Um, yeah. You know, I know I'm the one that talked last time about do we really need a month? And we've still got here a month. Could the May C and D be moved to the third week? That gives the council two weeks after receipt of the self evaluation and everything to submit their own evaluations. And it also pushes Paul's self evaluation later into May so that he's definitely doesn't have to work on it while he's finalizing the budget. So if we move these two to just the third week of May instead of first week, this one also then has to be moved. Yes, to move them all to third week. So it would all be third week. Yeah. And I think, you know, we should run this by Paul, but I'm guessing he'd be happier with not having to submit the budget in four days later or five days later, submit a self-evaluation. Right, right. right. Okay, so then now let me just go back on the color coding because I'm, I'm a little concerned about this. Town council reviews, town manager presents. We don't have a color for this. Well, I don't think we need a color. Okay. I do think we need green in the July E column. Nope, at the, the very first July E, at the very top, row two, because that's voting the current contract. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I just noticed that, so. Okay. okay. All right. I'm sorry, I flipped through this pretty fast. Yeah. So I had no other comments. I thought it looked good. So this document will guide, um, obviously the council, but in particular, um, the president and I assume the chair of GOL, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also Paul. Um, and we're gonna get input from Paul on this. And I think it's important if I understand what we're doing that that he be okay with this. If he has a problem with it and he wants to make some changes, we need to consider that and see if that, right? We want it to be something that we can all live with, um, particularly the, the, the town manager and the council. Um, we're going to run this by the council eventually for their approval. I don't know, we, we resolve this? In other words, is this we basically- We need to get approval. I think we agreed that it's- We want their input, but we're not gonna have a vote. I mean, if, if people have a problem or concern, we're perfectly willing to entertain it, but we're not asking them to vote on this. This is an internal process that GOL is constructing to just facilitate what is a challenging set of uh, you know, processes. So it doesn't need a vote, but it will be presented to the council for their review, I guess, or discussion, or no. Yeah, no, I think I think it's good to let the council know because it's changing when we're doing things, but right. I think this is a GOL timeline, a GOL right. process. Right. It's, it's so GOL will need to vote on it. The council is expecting to see it. Yes, yeah. no, that makes sense. I understand, but we're not, it's GOL that is, is creating this and presenting it to them. If they have serious problems or concerns, they're welcome to weigh in and we'll certainly take it in under advisement, but we're not asking for their, their stamp of approval. We're not asking them to vote on it. Do we need to vote on it? I guess in a way, yes, I guess. Um, we're not ready to do that today, I don't think, but um, at some point we will. I don't think we should vote on it until after the council sees it. So maybe a vote right. to that it's ready for the council to see. Okay. Actually, the agenda for the um, 
It's on the agenda for Monday. Oh, geez. Monday's really? going to be a long meeting. So if you, yeah. Do you want to actually have it discussed yet or just want to get, maybe just want to get it out to people and have them start looking at it and thinking about it, but actually discuss it at some future? I don't know. What's, yeah. It's certainly one of the items I would uh, either defer to the, to um, later. Uh, it's not what I see as pressing stuff. That's on. right. But if you've got time, you'll do it. If you don't, you won't. Right. Um, okay. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, all it would mean is a one quick memo transmission from the chair of GOL. To all the members of the council with this attached? I'm sorry, What what is it that you're yeah. asking? Yeah. yeah, and then that, I mean, just throwing it in the packet. Right. Whatever. And in, in the report, I could simply point out that it's there and um, we are soliciting, and we could also make this, you know, I could make this during my oral report. Um, it's there and um, we very much want you to look at it. And if you have any concerns, questions, problems, you should send them to the chair because we right. will take them up at our next meeting, but we're planning to, uh, move on this fairly quickly, but we want you to see it and we want you to get back to us. So I could do that orally as well as in the report, but oral would probably be most effective. Um, but we're not going to discuss it, hopefully, Monday. It's just noted that it's there and please send comments to us to me and then I would forward them to the committee. So can I ask a question? Should we leave that three things here? I would delete those three. I agree. And I think, George, these items right here, yep. we just include as part of the memo. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm saving this as draft five. Draft five. And I'll put a date on it. Thank you. And send it to you. Okay. You. That'd be great. Okay. Are we done with that? I think we are. Okay. Um, going forward with this, um, obviously we're going to wait and see what re reaction we get, a response from the council. Um, What's our next step as a committee with this whole larger issue with this document, but also with um, and maybe that's it. Now, there's once the document is we vote on it in, say, our next meeting or by early January, and then we just start following it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so the, the, yeah. doing the things it tells us to do. The first step is the that is coming up in January is. Right. The, Town manager talks about his goals and exactly right. Yeah. Right. So I think if the manager hasn't seen this, George or Lynn should send it to the manager. To no, Paul. I, I sent an early on version, but I think George, why don't you go ahead and send it to him and CC me with it so that I, I don't um, necessarily want to adopt it till I know that he thinks he can follow all of this. <laughs> right. No, that's absolutely right. So. Uh, I would uh, send him this, CC Lynn, and tell him that, uh, you know, it's also going to be given to the council, but please uh, look it over and get back to us with his thoughts. We could invite him to the meeting or he could just, it's up to him. He could come or we could just take, he could send his written comments. So here's my question. Shall we just take it off the agenda for Monday? I would. To the 21st. Well, it sounds like George thinks it can be handled just through reporting and right. sending it, comments it, directly to him. It's in the packet. I mean, you can put it, um, if it's in the packet, I can simply acknowledge that it's there and tell them why it's there and um, ask them to get back to us by, you know, obviously, hopefully before our next meeting or uh, as soon as possible and also send it to Paul. Are you incorporating it in your committee report? 
Uh, that's the plan, yes. Um, it, it, so it would be mentioned in the committee report, which would be in the packet, and this document would be in the packet, so it'd be referenced, right? And then I would bring it up in the oral report briefly just to remind people. That works okay. for me. Andy, do you have a problem with that? No, yeah. no, I just uh, something. I just thought it fit as a um, item that was appropriate with the chair's report from on behalf of the committee. Right, right. right. So I just want to mention one other thing. When we do adopt it, I'm I'm looking towards as a fellow chair of a committee towards when there's new councils. We should make sure it goes into the SharePoint under some sort of folder of committee processes or committee policies, all of these, so that whoever becomes chair can find these types of documents easily. Okay. Yeah. Have you talked specifically, Mandy Jo, with Athena about that as she organizes? Yeah. It just hit my mind today as I was thinking about this, like, we're going to follow it, but in a year. <laughs> right. Right, right. I, I had a meeting with her too, so let me just write myself a note. We have a, I have a problem with finance committee I'll mention because it fits right in. And that is the finance committee has not been using SharePoint because we have three members who don't have access to SharePoint. And uh, we therefore put the packet on the web site as opposed to the SharePoint. And, yeah. You're muted, Pat. Mute, mute, Pat. I was wondering just now for the first time why we don't have the packet on SharePoint and available on the uh, committee page. It, it's probably good to for these things to also show up on each committee page too as, as they get adopted so that okay. people the, the timelines and all it's just right. and that's what i mean by sharepoint is the committee page yeah well that's two very different locations they're both i think yeah. appropriate um unless well, there's you know. see every other committee has that they're they're in both places right. um finance is the only one that doesn't because of the non-resident i mean the resident non-voting members right yeah, we're trying to not do anything that makes them different. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. The okay. main point, yeah, is that- I guess that it doesn't feel to me like that makes them different. It makes them unable to access SharePoint, but it I, would, is easier for any other counselor. So I don't know, I, I will, I'm not, it's I not a big- to, I can talk to Athena about that. Uh, it's not a, super important, Andy. So do do what you feel right about. Okay, so we have um, dealt with item six, um, I believe. Item seven is the update on bylaws for future consideration. I um, have told Lynn and I've, I've said to you that if you have any additions you wanna to make to that document, send them to me directly and I will incorporate okay. them. Um, does anyone have anything to report uh, on any actions they've taken. I'm not the expecting only thing to right. I have to report in the list of things that I feel the council needs to accomplish by next December 31st is this set of bylaws. Okay. It's one of those things we really, it, it's our job. Right. So for yeah. GOL, we need to make sure this gets done. Yeah. Okay. For the next the next uh, cycle next. Uh, and and I want to just keep in mind we have, at a minimum, four general bylaws, coming on, related to sewer and water. And we're going to have a ton of zoning bylaws because Mandy Cho is going to be pumping them out. Okay. And so we are going to be extremely busy on the issue of bylaws okay. as, a, as GOL. Well, GOL though, for most of that is clear, consistent and actionable right. not its right. recommendations. Whereas right. this group, we might be the recommendations for. Right. right. It's gonna right. be, right. Understand. So we might have to start starting our meetings with this group of stuff. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's well. I think, I think we're that's all avoiding it. We, we think, sense a lot of excitement. <laughs> uh, I have to tell you, in the process of my actually going and finding my bylaws that I'm supposed to review, okay, which includes the peeping Tom one, excuse me, that's not the right word, um, right. which includes- Fearing and peeking, isn't it? I, yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> I found that we already have a bylaw about naming streets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We already have a naming bylaw. Yeah. So, okay. There you go. There's all kinds of uh, fun things to find in there. I think where, where we stand it basically is now everyone has, in a sense, their homework. And this, I'm saying this to myself, first of all. Right. And so in the future, um, it's people telling me that they or they're coming back to the committee and say, I've done my homework and this is what I've got. And that can happen anytime. It, you should give me a head, heads up, you're gonna do it, but you can do it anytime, including even during the meeting. But, um, and I hear Mandy's point that we need to start leading with this soon. Um, even if it's first or second item, and the answer is nobody has any homework to hand in. <laughs> well, it might be that the chair needs to tell so-and-so it's your week. I guess my question though is I've, mm -hmm. I've handed in the homework, but we I think we just need to talk about the results of the homework in the committee and then pass that on again, whether we're doing it or some other right, person. Exactly. Doing right. It. Right, right. What's the next action step? Yeah, and then start moving on those action steps. Right. And right. it sounds like, man, you're right. So um, I will mark that as a future item for our next agenda. We'll, we'll see. We've got a couple of things coming, but I hear you. Um, draft calendar. I just, you know, pretty nothing we need to do about it. Um, people just look at it and they see any particular problems, but it pretty much uh, follows at the moment the schedule we've been following, but that's certainly open to change. Mandy. So I had a couple of questions on it. Yep. Um, March 31st and April 7th, I just questioned why we had two two weeks in a row when we could probably get rid of one of them, unless we are backed up. Maybe that was the reason you were thinking no, we needed no, I think it's three just a mistake. and all. Yeah. Um, so that, that was just a, we should probably just pick one of those to delete. Um, November 3rd, here, here's my thing. Do we really want to have a meeting the day after the election? I'm just going to put that out there. Um, sure, sure, sure. That's why, yeah. Okay. And then, I mean, it's it's not necessarily a problem, but it is the election we and school committee and all are up for. Um, yes. Yes. And then January 5th, that, this is where all sorts of things come in. That The new council is going to be sworn in on the 3rd. So I'm not sure January 5th, 2022 is an appropriate time to be meeting because I'm not sure there's gonna be members of the committee at that point. Mm -hmm. um, if the council elects a new president, I mean, they're gonna have to elect a new president and do their elections on the third. We know there's gonna be changeover. It's not gonna be the same 13. Um, yep. So I would actually propose the 19th, maybe the 12th, but the 19th, which would be after I assume the second council meeting of the month. Um, which would give whoever's named president of the new council time to uh, survey counselors and figure out committees. Fair enough. So you suggest the ninth. I mean, obviously, even the day of week and time. The day of the week's probably yeah. going to change right. too. But if we're going right. to put a date out there, I I wouldn't put January fifth out there. I wonder if we should just not even put a date in. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, because committees are going to all have to make up their own minds. I don't know. I'd, I'd take it out or just put a footnote at the end. You know. Because the last official meeting of the committee as constituted yeah, would be December 15th. Yeah. And after that, it's somebody else's problem. Yeah. Might still be your problem, George. We'll you might have a different group of people. <laughs> Um, so I would suggest you want to put it up. down as rec. I'm sorry, Andy. put it down as recommended for the next council's consideration as a footnote or something. Okay. All right. So that it gives them something to start with. Okay. The other piece is that if the council starts messing with committee structures, BOL actually has to take the reins up pretty fast. Okay, 
so I'm just putting an asterisk next to it. And, you know, in the end, someone else will have to figure it out, but recommend it for next meeting. Um, just acknowledging that it's, and I assume that at least for this, well, I mean, this body also needs to choose, we'll have to choose a, uh, a chair and vice chair, um, but I'm just going on the assumption that we'll continue to meet um, on this day and time. That could yeah. change, I understand. So what were the other changes, Mandy, just quickly, so I, I'm in, uh, we'll move on. Um, we had, what was it, March? November 3rd, I, I don't necessarily think it's truly a problem, you know, but election day is the day before. Um, so, so there's a potential for, depending on what we're considering too, given that we're governance, that we might not have the right people available for a meeting, depending on what it is. Um, with we're, the election day, the day see, we're all still seated at that point. Yeah, right. No, we're all still seated. I'm just, I, I just consider whether that is a good day or not, or whether pushing it a week might be better. Okay, well, um, I think we're going to leave it for the moment, but it can be as we, you know, um, uh, we'll see where we stand. Yeah. You had a, another issue though earlier where March there was- 31 and April 7, two right. in a row with March having three meetings. I know other week, other months have three meetings because you really did just do one every other day, every right. other week. Um, right. But I, I don't see the need for two in a row unless you were thinking our, we were so backed up, we'd need it. Okay. Um, so, all right. Trying to follow the council schedule too, George. I think that's what I'm trying to do. So let me, yeah, I'll look at, yeah. And we ended up having to double up meetings, Mandy Joan. Yeah, I that's true. I didn't compare it to the council schedule. Yeah. I, I assumed that you compared That's it. what I was trying to do. Um, so, okay. I just um, looked for. I know. I, I, I think I'm going to leave it for the moment. Um, we can obviously, whoever is chair in the future, the committee can can change this. But other than that, um, and a provisional date of January 2022. Any other comments or concerns? Because I'm going to just leave these. Then they can be changed at a future date, no problem. But this gives us at least some idea of what we're the committee is committed to for the coming year. Should we be voting on it? so that Athena can post it on the committee web page and, um, get, and get Emily and all set up for them? I don't even, does it even need a vote? I mean, it's just, yeah. I mean, as I long as you- I mean, the council yeah. schedule, so. Yeah, okay. We could vote on it. I mean, basically it just sets up a, uh, a tentative schedule. Um, are people comfortable voting on it now or do they want to consider- it vote on it, doesn't that mean anytime we change it, we have to vote again? Well, we change it. I mean, we make changes, you know, yeah, but right? <laughs> we don't. This is, this is basically just saying this is for the public. Um, right. And, you know, obviously, for instance, if we suddenly change the day of week or the time, then we would have to redo everything. Um, so there's no super rush. But if things don't, uh, you know, nothing radical changes, um, this is what we send to Athena and she posts it for the public. And we use it, obviously, internally. But you know, sometimes we have extra meetings, right? We don't change the schedule. We just have an extra meeting. And occasionally we might drop a meeting. Um, so it's really more for information's sake. Um, but I'm perfectly willing to have a vote on it. And then I will send it to Athena and come January, uh, whatever, it'll get posted or it can be posted whenever she wants to put it up there. I don't know but, whether we need to vote, but I. I think it should get sent to Athena. Okay. Yep. All right. So I'm seeing consensus to send this to Athena um, and move it from draft to uh, the actual uh, schedule with the understanding that, of course, things can change. But good. We have two sets of minutes. We do not have the November 18 minutes. Uh, they're still in production. So you've had a long time now to look at these two sets of minutes. Um, Anyone have any changes or problems with either set of minutes? All right, I, total silence. Hey, hang on just a second. For Go you. ahead. Uh, there's no rush here. We can take a moment. I'm not. Uh, I'm just looking at my uh, version to see if I have any notes on it uh, before I. Anything that I have is really just typographical kind of 
you know, Scrivener things, not substantive. You could send them to me and I could make those corrections if you wish. Um, I can do that. Um, I'm sorry. I think it'd be easier to just do that than try and do it on the. Fine. Rather than do it in real time, I agree. I'll do it, I'll do it uh, immediately after the meeting. Fine. That's fine. Or do we want to just adopt them as amended? Right. Okay. Well, if there's no substantive changes and it's just a scrivener and typos, then um, I think we're okay. Um, I don't see or hear any substantive concerns about wording that won't change or something deleted. Um, there's some minor typos. Um, we can do them now, or and Andy's going to send his to me. Um, so I'd I like to. Up, right? me to. I'm sorry, Lynn. I can pull them up if you want me to. Um, it's it's up to the committee. I've looked at them now a lot, and I have no uh, changes to make. But uh, yes, you can put them up if you like. Um, but I don't see anybody who seems to have anything substantive to make changes on. So I just assume we move to a vote uh, the, to adopt both sets of minutes for uh, October 21 and November 4 as amended or as to be amended. Second. And the October 21 is the only one that I had, so I had two okay. teeny things on. Fine. Just send them to me, Andy, Andy, and I'll make the change. We have a motion second. Anyone? I'll second. I heard a motion. Yeah, oh, I, said, the I, said, oh. I had second, but fine. Maybe just second. I don't care who seconds. <laughs> fine. Um, so, chair says yes. Pat. Yes. Andy. Yes. Mandy. Yes. Lynn. Yes. Thank you. Um, I have no items not anticipated. We do not have any public presence, so there will not be any public comment. I want to talk briefly about future agenda items. Um, our next uh, meeting, December 16, um, we plan to have um, interviews and a vote on FinCom. Um, I don't think that would take up two, assuming we could do it all in the morning session, I don't think that will take up two hours. But I'm not yet ready to put facial recognition on the agenda because I'm afraid that might take up more time than we have, but that's what else is out there. Um, well, the only other thing would be out there is if TSO gets through with the larger issue of the public ways changes. Right, that could be that possibly come, come to us. To right. us. Right. Right. Um, I, and I think that we want to get back to, you know, for instance, the thing Mandy Joe suggested, which was to start looking at those bylaws. Good, fair enough. Okay. So and that we'll have be... surveillance coming up, but for not for a while. Okay. Well, you have facial recognition, which they're, they're separate, to... George. They're I understand. Separate. I understand. Yeah. And um, my thought was that to hold that off until January, but yeah. um, it could. Yeah, right. that's what. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, and surveillance. CRC won't see it, uh, CRC, GOL won't see it till the end of January at the earliest. Right, right. So at the moment, we're looking at possible public ways. We're, on, we're looking at obviously interviews. That's certainly going to take up uh, a good bit of our time, interviews and then vote. Um, and uh, uh, the bylaws. Right. Okay. All right. And then minutes. Minutes, yeah. All right. That's uh, all I have. Thank you, sir. All right. So very, um, very efficient meeting. Uh, I, I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm thank you, George. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. All right. Take Have care, everyone. Time. See you all soon. All right. Uh, safe travels tomorrow, Mandy. Thank yeah. you, Pat. Yeah. Take care. All right. Thank you, Emily. Call us, call us if you need road company. <laughs> <laughs> I got a book. <laughs>